Hi, I'm Glyn Jewis. I'm a photographer and author based in Devon. And in this short session, which is only about 30 minutes long, we're going to take a quick dive into some selections. Now, I think it's fair to say whether you're a photographer, a graphic designer or a digital artist, at some point you're going to need to make a selection. I think as well it's fair to say that the most frustrating selections are when we're trying to work on hair and fur. So in this session, I want to give you an overview of three techniques where you can actually fake it. You can actually fake it to look as if you made a fantastic selection of hair and fur, but we're using things like brushes in Photoshop. So there's three completely separate techniques. Let's dive in and have a quick look. All right, so for this first technique, I wanna show you how we can go about cutting out this deer stag and making the fur look so much better going around the outside. The first thing we could do, I guess, is go to the new select menu and choosing this subject. And that does a pretty good job already of making a selection going around the outside. Sure enough, it'll need a bit of tidying up, such as on the antlers. And you can see here when I press Q, to go to the quick mask mode and zoom in, you can actually see that it hasn't picked up these bits. It's done a great job, but there are some bits that are missed off. And I could just come in with a brush, paint in black and say, look, we don't need you to be selecting this area here. And kind of take a little bit of time, because I do like using that quick mask to just tidy up the selection a little bit. So wherever is covered with this overlay is what's not being selected. Everything that hasn't got the red overlay on it is what will be selected. But, you know, that kind of stuff we can do later on. The main thing I want to kind of concentrate on is the challenging part, which is all to do with the fur. Now, let's just come out of quick mask mode and go back to the marching ant selection that we can see here. Now, at this stage, we could then dive over into something like select and mask, which has been an absolute godsend when it comes to making pretty good selections of things like hair and fur but like every tool and every filter within photoshop it does have its limitations now if i just zoom in on this part here you can see now if i go and choose something like the refine edge brush tool over here and then we'll just come in and brush over the area just to sort of see if a selected mask can pick up on some of those fine flyaway bits of hair that it didn't get in the initial selection so we'll kind of say that we'll go for there. And obviously you would imagine that we go all the way around the deer to pick up those bits of fur. If I then release, it kind of analyzes it and it kind of looks okay, but let's have a look now in a different view. So we'll go to the view menu in the top right hand corner. And just for now, I'll choose on white and we'll just bring up the opacity to 100%. Now this is when it reveals how that selection really looks. And you can see it just looks well, it just looks crispy. It just doesn't look good. So we're going to have to do something to make it look a whole lot better. And this is how we can fake a selection to make it look as if we've made a really, really good one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the, uh, well, first of all, I'll click cancel to come out of select and mask. I'll keep the active selection there. But what I will do first of all then is add a layer mask. So it kind of virtually cuts the deer stag out. And basically with uh, the layer masks here, if we just hold down the Alt key on Windows, Option key on Mac, click directly on the thumbnail of the layer mask, you can see this is basically what the layer mask has done. If I zoom out, the white areas are what we can see, the black areas are what we can't see. So here's how we can fix this fur just down here. I'm going to get a brush and I'm going to make sure that the brush is nice and hard. So we'll take it up to 100% on the hardness. And let's just increase the size using the right square bracket key. And I'm just going to brush away this part of the uh, neck there of the deer. Just bring it right in. And imagine I would go all the way around the deer, taking off a little bit of that fur around the outside. Now we've done that, I'm then going to go back to my brushes. And in here, we've got loads and loads of brushes. And I'm going to click on Legacy Brushes. Let's just bring this up a little bit here. And then Default Brushes. And if I scroll all the way down, great thing is we can see a representation of what that brush will look like when it's used. So I can come all the way down, quite a way down. Here we go. We've got a couple of ones here. This was 112 called Dune Grass and 134 just called Grass. So what I think I'll do is I will click on one, three, four. So that now makes it the brush that I'm selecting. And then we'll go to the brush settings in the options bar at the top of the screen. 
Now this is where I can play around with how the brush will look when I use it. And the great thing is at the bottom here, here we have a real time preview of what the brush will look like with the current settings. Now I'm gonna turn all these off just up here and we'll just kind of go through them as we need them. The first one we're on is brush tip shape. So at the moment, this is how the grass would look when I used that brush. I'm gonna bring this spacing over to the left-hand side to gather it in just a little bit more. Then I'm gonna turn on shape dynamics. Now at the top here, we have size jitter. This basically means that every time we lift off and press down with the brush, or if we're using something like a tablet that's got pressure sensitivity, when we press down harder, it'll vary the size of that brush stroke. Now we don't want that to happen too much because we're looking at using the, making it into fur. So I'm gonna bring that size jitter way down. So we'll go for something like, something really low, six, 7%, something like that. Angle jitter, this is where if that was really high, you can see in the preview at the bottom here, that's gonna vary the angle of that particular uh, grass or fur as we want it to look. So we don't want that to happen either. So I'm gonna bring that down really, really low as well. And let's have a look at a couple more here. Scattering, now we'll turn that off. In fact, on shape dynamics, there's one here called angle. This is a good one to use. I'm gonna use this set to direction. So no matter where I go with my brush, it's actually going to follow the angle and the direction of my brush. And that stops me having to come in and manually change the angle of the brush. That's really, really useful. Okay, so that's that for now. Then in fact, I'm just gonna angle that over just to start off with, and I can kind of see as I bring it over where that's gonna be. So that's look, looking around about there. Looking around about there is looking good. All right, so let's just close that down. Now that we've got this brush, we painted away the fur on the neck using black. Now we know with layer masks, we need to paint in white to reveal parts of that actual layer. So I'm gonna press X on my keyboard to make sure that my foreground color is now in white. My brush is at the top here. I can see it's 134 pixels. That's a bit too big. Let's use the brush, uh, the left square bracket key to bring it down a bit. I'll just zoom out just a touch. So now look, look what I can do with this brush. I can now paint in white to start bringing back that little bit of um, fur on the deer's neck, but that grass brush is now starting to look a little bit like fur. Let me just put a layer beneath so you can actually see it. Let's just click down here to create a layer. I'll fill that with uh, gray just to make it a little bit more obvious. There we go. Can you see now, look? Now we're starting to make it look a little bit like fur. So that's just a way of faking it. Now you've got to be careful when you're doing this that you don't brush too far out because if you do brush too far out, you'll start to bring in other parts of the background, which we obviously don't want to do. So to prevent that, if we double click on the actual uh, layer mask in the thumbnail there over in the layers panel, we've got this density slider and we can just temporarily reduce the density. And when we do that, it starts to reveal the original background and we can see the original hair. So now we kind of know how far we can paint before we start to go too far over. Let's just bring that density up so you can see there. So that's pretty cool. So if we just turn this layer mask off, so if we go before and after, before and after, you can see that is starting to look a little bit like first. That's one way that you can fake it and save yourself a lot of time and frustration in selecting hair and fur. All right, so in this next technique, I wanna show you again how we can use brushes in Photoshop to fake a selection, but these particular brushes don't come installed in Photoshop. You can download them from elsewhere. Before we get to that point though, let's have a quick look at the selection we're working on at the moment, which is this one of the pirate. I'm in the select and mask area of Photoshop. It's done a really great job of selecting the body and the sword and the actual feathers as well on the hat. The tricky part is the hair. So this is where I would zoom in a little bit more, a little closer like so, and then turn to the refine edge brush tool from the left hand side, come in and then start to paint over the hair, the loose flyaway hair that Photoshop didn't quite pick up on that initial first selection. So we'll go for the right hand side just there. Let's just try over on the left hand side. You can see there's lots and lots of very fine hair. We don't have to pick up all of these to make the selection look um, good, but obviously the more we can pick up the better. 
So something like that. Now that doesn't look too bad at the moment, but we can come over to the right hand side and change the view here. So let's have a look how it's looking on say black and white. It's not looking too bad. You can see there's some really fine hairs. So this could possibly be a really good selection. So let's just go back to that onion skinning view, which I really do like to use because it allows you to see the original background beneath it. So there are other things we could do. We can click on the smart radius here to see if Photoshop can now really start to look at our picture so that when we start to move the radius slider here, it starts to kind of look to see if it can join up other parts of the hair that it didn't initially see on that first pass. And that kind of works okay, although it doesn't seem to be doing too much more uh, than what we've already got as our result at the moment. So I think we'll leave it like that, but we will send it out into Photoshop. We'll go to the output settings at the bottom here, and I'm gonna choose just for now, new layer with layer mask. So when I click OK, that sends it back into Photoshop uh, where we can see it. Here's my original one that we sent into the selector mask in the middle. This is the new one. Now I'm gonna add a new layer underneath and just fill that with gray so that we can kind of see what we're doing here. So at the moment, that actually doesn't look too bad until we zoom in. And that's when we start to see that the hair is kind of transparent. There's a lot of these fine hairs missing. It's a little bit crispy. It's not looking too good. We can definitely do better using brushes. So let's have a look at that now. Let's just delete this upper layer. We'll turn on our original and I'll just click on the layer mask just there for a second. Now the brushes I'm going to recommend to you, they're from a guy, a very good friend of mine called Aaron Blaze, who worked at Disney for over 20 years, animating things like The Lion King. And if you remember going back a few years now, there was the John Lewis advert, The Bear and the Hare. They flew out Aaron over to actually animate that for the TV as well. So he's got an incredible amount of history and talent within the art world. But what Aaron has done on his website, which is Creature Art Teacher, he's got sections here where you can download tutorials, but in this column here, we've got brushes and texture sets. So if I click on that, it'll then bring up these little uh, downloads available from Aaron's website, which are ridiculously cheap, $3.50, where we've got custom brushes for hair, for fur, for foliage and you name it. But this one here, the Hair and Fur Brush Volume 2 is the one that I've downloaded and got onto my computer. Now, if you do end up going there to get some brushes like this from Aaron or from anywhere else that you can get them, once you've downloaded them, the way to install them is by going to your brushes in the top right hand corner, you've got a little fly out menu where it says import brushes. And that there is where you would then navigate to where you've got them. You'll know what they are because it says dot ABR at the extension there, you'd click on it and then click open. And once they're installed, you'll see them within your brush picker in a nice folder here where you can actually see them all labeled below and actual little thumbnails, which you can increase the size of to see what that brush is going to, what kind of effect it's going to give you. Now let's just have a quick look at one of the brushes here. If I just create a new document, we'll go file and new. We'll just go for that, make sure it's got a white background. And you can see now as I use say, let's have a look at this particular brush here. As I brush with it, you can see we are creating quite a nice looking fur or hair kind of effect. So these are all that you can, these are all kind of like examples of the brushes that you can get from this set from Aaron. And Aaron has no idea that I'm kind of uh, mentioning these on this particular video for you folks. But let's just scroll down. Let's have a look at a couple more because I want to choose one that's going to be suitable for, that one could work actually. We'll choose one that's going to be suitable for the pirate. We'll go with this one just here for now, which is number 77.3. So we'll go for that one. Uh, but what I will do is just come up to the brush settings in the options bar at the top of the screen. And I'm going to turn off, we don't want pen pressure, we don't need opacity to change color dynamics, we're going to bring that all the way down as well. So we're just going to have a consistently dark, there we go, something like that. Uh, take the brightness, bring that way down, we want it to be a dark, there we go, that's it. So brightness jitter, which is where the brightness of the brush would vary every time we do a brush stroke will change not so much, 28%, something like that. Okay, let's dive over then to our pirate and see how we can use this brush and other brushes to make it look as if we did a better cutout than we actually did. I'm gonna add two layers to the layer, mat, to the layer stack. We'll click on the first one here. We'll call this one uh, front. 
and we'll add another one and we'll call this one, we'll rename this one to behind. Uh, behind and we'll drag that one underneath the pirate layer in fact we'll stay on that one just for a minute so let's have a quick look what we can do with these brushes again it's going to take a bit of practice to make this look real uh, really realistic but you can see already as i'm pr brushing with them we can start to get some pretty cool results so i'm just going to brush down and just keep brushing over that brush stroke just to increase it just to see what kind of effect we can get I'm going to vary the size of the brush using my right and left square bracket key. With the left square makes it smaller, the right square makes it bigger. Going a little bit too far off the side there. So let's just bring that in just a touch. Just take it back just a little bit to about there. There we go. So keep the brush nice and small. We'll come on to the other side as well. Just to fill in some of these gaps like so so we'll go for that brush there let's go and try another brush as well so come back over to this empty document we'll go back to my brushes and let's have a try this one here we don't want to use that one uh, let's have a look further up what's this one do just here maybe not that one uh, lots and lots of different effects let's go for this one here i quite like that wavy hair look it's given at the bottom again go to the brush settings make sure that we don't have anything that's going to make the brush behave in a way that we don't want it to that's looking pretty good all right let's go back to our pirate uh, close these little panels out the way so we can see our image just below it i'm going to click on the front layer now and just apply some brush strokes coming down there so you can have a lot of fun with this, just brushing over. This is what they'll do a lot in magazines to fake it, to make it look as if there's been a cutout when there actually hasn't. If you go too heavy in certain areas, just get your eraser or maybe even use a layer mask if you're going to be really good, just to kind of thin it out just a little bit in those areas so it's not quite so obvious. Like so, maybe lower the opacity on these layers that you're working on. Let's just bring the opacity down on there. So you can kind of see that that's actually not looking too bad. I mean, I'm going really quickly, but this is just to give you an idea of how we can fake it to make it look as if we're selecting hair when we're not just by using brushes. Now in the third and final technique, I want to just quickly show you how you can use somebody else's hair in your picture to make it look as if you did a fantastic hair cut out. Okay, so in this final technique, I want to show you how we can now use hair from a completely different picture in our own to make it look as if we did a great selection. So to do that, I'm first of all going to look for a picture that has hair similar to what our pirate has. And to do that, I'm going to go to Adobe Stock. So I'm going to go to File and Search Adobe Stock. Now, when that comes up, it opens up the Adobe Stock website in your browser. So in here, I'm going to type something like curly hair on white. If I can get it on a white background, it's going to make it so much easier to extract it to then use it. Let's have a look. I press uh, enter on there. You can see there's a whole load of pictures come up with really wavy curly hair. And I think this one here, right in the uh, middle here, is going to be the perfect one for it. So when I download this, I can either download a uh, low res preview or the full uh, sized image, which I've actually done. So if we just open that up, I'll go to file and open. I've got that saved in my Creative Cloud files just here, and we click on it just there. So you can see this hair on the outside is going to be perfect for faking the look of our pirate's hair to make it look as if our selection was good. So what we're going to do first of all then is cut that hair out. So we're going to go to the Channels tab, and here we can see the RGB full colour composite of our image, which we can see in the workspace. But underneath it, each of the individual red, green, and blue channels. And what I'm looking for here is the channel that has the most contrast uh, of the subject against the background. And clearly that is the blue channel. The hair is very, very dark here, which is what we want. Now I don't work on the original channel because that'll make it all go a little bit crazy. But what I will do is click on the thumbnail of that channel and drag it down on top of the new channel icon. So it says blue copy. And I'll double click in there to rename that one hair. Now, all I need is the hair going around the outside, all this flyaway wavy hair. So I'm going to get my lasso tool and make a very loose selection 
just to include that hair on the outside. So you can see I'm just dragging this down all the way down to the bottom to round about there and then bring it up the outside, making sure that I include all those loose flyaway hairs like so. So you can see now the marching ants just saying that this is the area that we're going to be keeping. Now I don't need the rest of it. So what I'm going to do with that is first of all, go to select inverse. So the opposite is now selected, everything except this area of hair on the outside. Then I'll go to the edit menu, choose fill. And from here, I'll choose white in the contents menu and click OK. Let's just go to select and deselect. So this is the hair that we definitely want to make use of. That'll look fantastic on our pirate. Need to darken it down just a little bit because we're going to actually use this to make a brush. So I'm going to go to image, adjustments and levels. And in here we've got the black point sampler. So if I click on that, come over onto the hair and I can click down on some of the lighter parts of the hair to say, can you turn that black? And you can see that's what it's done just there. Might actually use it again, just on this top bit. There we go. So that's really kind of defined there. We can see all these loose, really fine flyaway hairs on the outside and then we'll click OK. So the next step to turn this into a brush is I'm going to come over to the channels uh, panel just over here. At the bottom is the one we've got with the hair on. I'm going to hold down the command key on Mac or control key on Windows and click once on that thumbnail. And you can see when I do that, it loads it all as a active selection. Then I'm going to go to the select menu and choose at the bottom save selection. Now, what's really important here is where it says destination and document, I change that to say new. At the moment, the destination is the current image that we have open. So it's just saying that we're going to save the selection within this particular image, but we don't want to do that. I'm going to choose new and we'll just give it a name again at the bottom, call it hair and click OK. And when we do that, you might have seen then a new tab opens up with just this in. The channel, there's only one channel. If we go to the layers, you can see it is just an image containing this particular hair that we've cut out. So let's change this into a brush. We do that by going to the edit menu and clicking on define brush preset. But we can't at the moment because it's grayed out. And the reason for that is the size of this document is too big for us to create a brush. The maximum length of the long edge of a document when we want to make a brush is 5,000 pixels. And if we go to image and image size, we can see here that it's actually 5,220. So let's just change it to 5,000, click OK, and then go to the edit menu and choose define brush preset. Click on that. It brings up the name of the brush. So we'll call this, let's call it wavy hair and then click OK. And you can see now that my cursor has become the shape of that particular brush. So if I now use it and press down, you can see that there we go, I'm painting with that brush. Now also, if you go over to your brush picker, you'll notice that that brush, I didn't spell wavy correctly, but you know what I mean, has now appeared in our brush picker for us to pick and choose any time we want from now on within Photoshop. So this is really handy. So this is how we could use this brush to make it look like our pirate selection was even better. So uh, in the layers panel, I'll just add a layer here underneath our pirate and I'll just call that hair. I can then come into our image. We've got a black foreground color. I might just sample some of the hair. Let's just sample the very, very dark part of the hair just there. Let's put that into the foreground color. Can't see the brush at the minute because it's way too big for this particular picture. There we go. So I'm using the left square bracket key to bring it down. And um, all we can do now is just start pressing down. And you can see as we do that, can you see how it's adding in that hair? I absolutely love this for faking the look of doing hair cutouts. And you can see we can just keep on pressing it to add more hair in there. We can also open up the brush settings because in here we have the rotation. So if you want to vary it just a little bit, you can change the angle. So we've got some of the hair coming down from up there. Let's have a look at that. Might want to do a little bit more at this bottom bit just there. And also if you wanted to use it on the other side, at the moment the brush is only giving us hair which would come down the left. But in here we have the flip X and flip Y. If we choose the flip X, 
it'll completely flip it horizontally so we can now use the brush down the other side of the head as well play around with the rotation of it and start dabbing in and adding in some hair to make it look as if we did a fantastic cutout and again i'm going really quickly but this is all there to give you uh the kind of I don't know, get that grey matter going to think, I wonder what would happen if, or just give this a go. Do you know what I mean? Just give it a go. There's so many different things we can do here. The tools within Photoshop are fantastic, but sometimes we just have to improvise and think outside the box to make it look as if we did something like a selection when really we didn't. So there you go, three very quick techniques in a very short session to show you how you can fake the look of a selection using brushes and somebody else's hair. More than anything, what I hope this session has done is given you a bit of food for thought that really sometimes we don't need to kind of just keep plowing on trying to make a particular tool or filter in Photoshop work to give us results when really it's not going to. Sometimes we need to turn to different tools and different techniques which we may not have originally thought of but that can be fantastic for giving us the final result we want. Now, straight after this session, I'm going to be diving into the chat room. So if any of you got any questions at all, I'll be there to answer those. But in the meantime as well, check out my website over at glyndewis.com. And I've also, at the uh, end of June this year, got a new book coming out, kind of appropriately called the Photoshop Layers and Selections Workshop, published by Rocky Nook. But thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the chat room. Okay, hi everybody. Thanks so much for tuning into that session. I hope, uh, although it was only a short session, I hope that's been useful for you. Um, I'm going to stick around for the next uh, 10 minutes. I've got uh, some questions to go through. So I'm going to dive into the, the main site where you've been watching this to see what kind of questions we've got. Because I did see some coming through as we were doing it. Um, kicking off, we've got Phil Jones who's asking about, I thought this was a joke at first, but he says he has a problem <laughs> selecting squirrels. Not something I've ever done, uh, Phil, but I get what your question is. You're basically saying that when they're side on, you can do the selection using the selector mask of the fur going around the outside. However, it's the very fine whiskers that you're having trouble selecting. Now, I'll be honest with you, you know, we, we see that Photoshop is getting better and better with every update. It's just incredible how they are bringing all this Adobe Sensei artificial intelligence into Photoshop to help us with our selections. But that being said, no matter how good it gets, like I said in the video, it's going to have its limitations. So when it comes to what could potentially be one or two pixel width whiskers, that's when you're going to have to start to look at. If you can't pick them up because the background's too busy or whatever, then you're going to have to look at doing things like using a brush and a very fine stroke with that. I'd highly recommend you check out Aaron Blaze's website. He's got lots of instruction on there of how you can use the brushes in all kinds of different ways. So I'd definitely check that out. The only other way may be if you're photographing these uh, creatures and they've got like a very clean background behind them is doing a channel pull, which is what I did initially on that last technique to do that selection of the hair when you dive into the channels. So, you know, Photoshop being Photoshop, there are so many ways to do different things. It's just a case of what's going to work on that particular image. So I, I kind of hope that helps. But for me, I think brushes might be the way to go with that one. All right, let's have a scroll down uh malcolm heaven uh is there any sound i hope there was <laughs> sue k has asked if this is going to be on the youtube channel uh, this this won't be however here's a shameless plug this kind of stuff is going to be in the new book that i showed you at the very end there the selection uh, layers and selections workshop uh my friend richard he's been watching it hi richard uh the martin cartledge has asked what the website address was i presume that's the uh, aaron blaze website it's uh, basically it's creature art teacher.com so creatureartteacher.com aaron blaze it is absolutely packed to the rafters with uh, tutorials brushes textures you name it i mean the guy worked at disney for over 20 years there is a shed loads of knowledge and stuff in there for you to absorb because that kind of stuff even though he's a digital artist if you're making selections there is a lot we can in fact there's a lot we can learn from people like aaron anyway when it comes to shadows and highlights especially if you're into doing your compositing so i'd highly recommend you check it out uh richard knight has put what just happened i was watching glenn 
cutting fur off on a stag and so all of a sudden he's talking about a pirate <laughs> i was just <laughs> the technique i showed at the start there richard i don't know if you're joking here but the technique at the start there was to show this is how you would do it and then you would just kind of continue it all the way around we could have sat there for 30 minutes and done the same thing but who wants to do that so it's just to show how you were doing that one part but you'd go all the way around and then we dived into a different image to show a different technique so but you probably knew that you probably knew that uh, my friend Trevor has put a uh, bit like to the party. Always good to see you. Thank you very much, Trevor. Thanks for joining. And um, John Dobson, do you have any tips for selecting propellers? Good question, John. That's a good question. Okay, there are ways you can do it. I, I can certainly show at some point. If you want to, again, shameless plug, come over to my website, glyndewis.com, get onto the newsletter, send me an email, and then we can look at doing uh, email member only kind of videos to show this kind of stuff. However, I am going to be doing a video to show how I actually create propellers because in lockdown one, I did do a series of pictures of model aircraft, making it look like kind of real aircraft paintings to show how I came up with a technique for making propellers. So maybe that could be helpful as well, but we can certainly look at it, how to select them, how to create them, dive over, give us a shout and we'll see what we can do. Um, I can't see any more questions there. Uh, so I can, stay here tell you a couple of jokes <laughs> sit around you can see me drinking my cup of tea uh, but otherwise i'll just say thank you so much for uh, joining the session on this saturday morning and please do you know check out the uh, website youtube channel and also the new book which is being published by rocky nook coming very soon <laughs>